Wow. Well, I can hear him. Welcome back to the channel, guys. Hope everyone's doing well. Today, we're going to talk about this little bad boy. You've probably seen it. If you're into radio, you would have seen this radio. It's been around for a little while. It's the Quansheng UV5K. Eight. Nearly got it right, it's the UV K58. So what's interesting about this little radio then? It's just another Chinese dual band radio. There's hundreds of them about now, you know, like a Boafeng. What's special about this radio? Well, you can see already on the screen, it looks slightly different, like it's got some secrets to hide away behind. So what's interesting about this little radio is that inside it has a very powerful RF chip called the Beacon 4818. What this in a nutshell means is by loading some clever firmware on here by a community that's kind of appeared um, making software for this thing. You can have a radio that covers from 18 megahertz all the way to 1300 megahertz and it will transmit in those ranges too. There are some caveats, it's not gonna be completely like, you're not gonna get everything for nothing, but this is a cheap radio, and the firmware these guys have created is absolutely astonishing. So I'm not gonna go into too much detail about the different firmware types, there's been loads of videos about this already, but look, just to give you a teaser, if you're not familiar with this already, here is a spectrum display showing three megahertz in the two meter handband. I mean, it's just nuts for a little radio like this. Now, many of you will be aware that there's been lots of videos on this little radio in action, especially from this guy, um, OM0ET. He's done some fantastic videos of this little radio in action, showing um, 10 meters, the 10 meter amateur band, the 11 meter CB band, um, you know, going downwards into the HF. It, it's absolutely astonishing, really. Um, and this firmware is the firmware, the latest firmware at the time of this video from um, Factchi. I'll leave a link in the description for that. As you can imagine, there's a lot of excitement around this at the moment. So things are obviously going to, you know, keep progressing with these firmwares. But I mean, I still haven't figured it all out. It's, there's so much to it. It's it's really interesting. Anyway, in the true spirit of amateur radio, I wanted to do some tests for myself with this thing. So in particular, what I'm interested in is the transmit. How much power does it put out on the different bands? It appears to transmit. You can't stupid you're not gonna Right, so to start off with non-scientific test, I've just put a CB antenna on the top of it. Um and we're gonna see if I can hear my mate down the road. Yeah, hello Andy. Andy, you got a copy on Wow. Well I can hear him. So before we get carried away with this thing, we've already seen that it's a great receiver and it's picking up a CB signal about three or four miles down the road. Absolutely brilliant. But before we start going transmitting anywhere, it's really important to realize that whilst this appears to be a great receiver, it's not actually designed to transmit on anything other than two meters and 70 cents. So if you start transmitting outside of those bands, you're gonna be probably spitting out RF in all sorts of places, mainly the harmonics, so all radios, you know, if you start at a fundamental frequency of what you've set the radio to, you'll have a second harmonic at two times that frequency. So if you're transmitting on 70, it will be 140, and then so on two times, three times, four times. Now, normally these are filtered out if the radio is actually kind of designed for those bands. This won't be. So I can tell you now <laughs> that if you if you transmit on 70 megahertz, there's going to be a very strong harmonic on 140 megahertz. Now, that's not ideal at all. And that is why we've got one of these tiny SA meters here so that we can analyze what these harmonics are doing and also there's some other issues as well that you might come across with spurious um, harmonics as well. So there's even more RF that's spitting out in all sorts of places. So this is really important to understand because if you want to measure power, you obviously can't measure power if you've got lots of different frequencies being emitted from one transmitter because how do you know where that power is going to be um, measured correctly? So that's why something like having a an actual spectrum analyzer, which I mean, in this day and age, the fact that you can get a spectrum analyzer in the palm of your hand is, is pretty bonkers. Um, <laughs> but basically using something like this, you'll be able to see the power output and everything. You're basically gonna get a snapshot of what this radio is chucking out in full visual format. So this goes from zero Hertz up to 800. So to put this into practical terms and show you what I'm talking about here, we've got our radio, we're going into an attenuation device here, which drops the signal significantly because you can't just feed five watts into this um, spectrum analyzer. It will just absolutely, you know, annihilate it. So we've got a minus 40 dB attenuator here, which is going to drop the signal significantly. It's a 10 watt attenuator, basically. And on the tiny SA, what we're going to use it for is to measure the power output 
of this transmitter here. So we're going to transmit and then we're going to see what power it puts out. Now I've configured this tiny SA in a way that allows it to show um, actual watts, which is pretty cool. Um, and I've also adjusted the, the gain here to minus 40 to compensate for this um, dummy load. Now it's not going to be 100% accurate because you get insertion losses and all this. I've got all these adapters here as well, so that's not going to help. But it is going to give us an idea of what actually happens if we transmit on an out of band frequency like 70 megahertz. So, get ready for this. I'm going to key the radio up, and you can see here we've got two spikes. Now, the first spike is, is virtually non-existent. You can hardly see it. And you can see here it's at 70.2 megahertz, which is about what I've got the radio set to. It's not, as I say, this, this actually isn't even calibrated, this tiny SA. Um, but um, yeah, so it's around that frequency there. Now, the other spike you'll see here is at 140.6, right? I called it 140 because you know the inaccuracies, but you can see here we're measuring 5.46 watts on 140 megahertz. Better not key out for too long. But we are transmitting into a dummy load, so it's not going to get out too far. So yeah, as I say, it's pretty cool, isn't it? You can see visually on the spectrum where um, you're getting a signal out, which is quite cool. So if we go back to our 70 megahertz, you can see. It's about 12 milliwatts, something like that, 12.6 milliwatts. It might be a bit less, might be a bit more, um, but that will give you an idea of what you're actually putting out on the, that frequency that we've set, so 70 megahertz. Meanwhile, 140, you're putting out the full five watts. And that is probably because the amplifier in here is designed for you know two meters and 70 cents. So what it's doing is effectively amplifying the second harmonic up to a five watt level. So you can start to see it's not really a good idea transmitting somewhere like 70 megahertz because the second harmonic is actually 140 and then that's just gonna get boosted by the amplifier. And also I didn't mention that it was transmitting on the third harmonic as well, 210 megahertz or thereabouts. Very, very small signal again, but like 70 megahertz, it's out of the range of the amplifier. So that's why the signal's really small. So I know what all the CB guys are gonna be asking that have bought this. How much power does it put out on 27 megahertz? Right, take note. This this is very important. This is what happens when you transmit on the CB bands, guys. So 27 megahertz, you're getting 1.9 milliwatts out, hardly anything. But, and this ain't good at all, you'll also have a slight little harmonic at around 54 megahertz, as you'd expect, two times 27, it's 54. And then on from that, it gets worse. You're gonna basically be spitting out emissions all over the place. So 550 milliwatts at 80.9 megahertz. You're gonna get 659 milliwatts going out at 107, dangerously close to the air band. And then you're gonna get 617 milliwatts at 135. And then you're gonna get 579 milliwatts at 162. And then up from there, it's just in the milliwatt range. But yeah, it's not good. So yeah, not a good idea to do that at all. Now, it could be possible that you could design some bandpass filters that you could use with this sort of thing. I think before you did that, you'd probably have to disable the amplifier inside this radio. And once you did that, it'd be really interesting because you'd have a really broad band transmitter, a bit like a Hack RF, which then you could maybe design a filter for and boost a particular signal that you wanted to use um, with it. I mean, the radio itself is a great receiver. I'll show you another example of this radio up against an ICOM 705 and a little um, CR uh, four meters set and the results are pretty astounding really so this is the RSGB news being read by M0XTA um, shout out to you Salim I spoke to you the other day and this is being received on a little Anytone 779 not a CRT um, just a mag mount in the loft with a little vertical on, on it for four meters next I flicked over to the Quan Sheng I think it sounds pretty good Then I flicked over to the ICOM 705, could hardly hear it, so I started fiddling around with um, the preamps and stuff like that. Um, very, very noisy signal, but as usual, it's solved by turning the display off on the 705, and then I was able to receive it, similar to the other two radios. Finally, I tested my FT5D. 
Nothing at all. So it would appear the big guys should be getting worried right now. The fact that you can have a piece of hardware like this for 20 quid and then put some firmware on it and it opens it up to just a whole new ball game is going to change the game. It's changing the game already and massive respect to the guys that have written the firmware for this because I'm sure it hasn't been a, an easy ride at all. As we start moving towards powerful RF devices on silicon, we're gonna see some really interesting stuff happen. And I suspect that this radio here is actually just a reference design from the company Beckon that make the RF chip. And all it's gonna take is some hardware guys to get on this project as well and we could start seeing external filters external amplifiers just expanding what this thing can do i really think this thing's got a future anyway guys hope you've enjoyed this one super excited stuff make sure you get one of these before they sell out